Hi everyone. So it is just after 8.30 in the morning. I've been up since, well I woke up at 5 in the morning and I got up at 5.30 to feed my cat mittens. I usually, you know, I usually fall asleep about 10 and I wake up early. Uh, I guess it's because I'm old. <laughs> and, you know, I get up, I go on the computer, I have my coffee and uh, I start thinking of video ideas for this channel. Uh, and, you know, I, I was looking at some more SCTV uh, videos to, to react to because I just find them so funny. And my last one, for some strange reason, has over 900 views, which is kind of surprising. But uh, I thought I would talk about the Beatles because it's kind of exciting for us Beatles fans, with the news about the Red and the Blue albums being uh, remixed with added songs and coming out very soon, uh, I will definitely be getting the uh, the two two the two two CD sets. Yeah. And I thought I would talk about something I've had. I've had these since what is it, 1995? Yeah. Uh, started coming out in 1995 and then 1996. So the Beatles Anthology. There it is. Two CD sets. This was, once again, you know, so exciting for Beatle fans when this came out. There's the second one. But I, I love the covers too. Sometimes, uh, like the, the Beatles, uh, Past Masters, the cover is so plain and boring, but these are really well done. It's the second one. And the third one. So, I'll, I'll tell you things I like and don't like about these. The only thing I'm not a big fan of for these is, especially the earlier, like on, uh, get the right one here, on this one, is the live cuts, you know, with the screaming girls and everything. And uh, I, I usually skip those. I just, you know, I, I want to, I'm more interested in the studio stuff. So, and what I love about these. There's a lot of, uh, you know, the double CD cases and they break so easily. These are very well made, just the way they're designed. So they're not going to break. I mean, I've had these <laughs> since, what, 95? 05, 15, almost, almost 30 years. And each one of these comes with a really detailed booklet. And so these cover, uh, you know, they're like outtakes from their sessions, some demos. There's an excellent demo of Paul doing Come and Get It, which he wrote for the band Badfinger. He, he, what's amazing about uh, the, the one that's on this is he plays everything. He plays the drums, the bass, the guitar. He created the whole song by himself, and it sounds very similar to the Badfinger cut. And so when he gave it to the band Badfinger, he said, just redo it like I, you know, the very same. Just copy what I did, and you'll have a hit. <laughs> and they did. So, I rarely play these. I mean, when when I bought this, of course, I played this a lot, so... I just, you know, I don't need to play this very often, but when I do, I really do enjoy it. Except for the live cuts. <laughs> 
yeah, there's, you know, different takes of uh, different songs. And it's really, you know, even different, uh, almost like a, a totally different song. Like with Tax Man, and there's also Leave My Kid in Alone, which us Beatles fans never understood why that, that was never released. John just does a killer version. Uh, he just rips the vocals. It's kind of similar to Bad Boy and uh, Dizzy Miss Lizzie, the way he's singing. Yeah, One After 909, very early version of that. The middle period. The Beatles were just the coolest. Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, and I just, uh, speaking of Paul McCartney, I just listened to uh, McCartney 3, which he released a couple of years ago last night. I hadn't played it in quite a few months. And I think I enjoyed it more than ever. It is so good. Nice picture of John. John and George. Let's not forget Ringo. Can't forget Ringo. Yeah, different takes of Penny Lane, uh, Strawberry Fields Forever, the way they have it so it's showing the way that it was built, which is really interesting. A Day in the Life, different takes of that. The Fool on the Hill demo. And then the uh, final one, and it would be nice if they would uh, redo these, remix them, maybe add even more content to them. And this is number three. Yeah, Helter Skelter. Happiness is a warm gun. the rooftop. Yeah, one of the final pictures of all four of them together, sadly. The last photo session. And George is smiling. What about that? <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, great memories of uh, back in 1995 when this was announced after the uh, TV, th what, Three Nights in a Row, the, the Beatles anthology, that was very exciting. And of course, the, the new Beatles songs, which were excellent, by the way, uh, Real Love and... Free as a bird. Love the video for both of those. So yeah, so this one starts with Free as a Bird, the, you know, at the very beginning of this. And then there's some talk, John Lennon talking about the Beatles. Really, really old uh, recordings. That'll be the day in spite of all the danger. Not the greatest quality, but still so interesting to hear, you know, them back in the 
late 50s. And then with uh, Tony Sh Sheridan, with My Bonnie, John having lead vocals on each he's sweet. The instrumental Cry for a Shadow, the only song written by John Lennon and George Harrison together. Yeah. I'll be back demo. No reply demo. Eight days a week, false starts. Yeah, they even have like the DECA sessions. The only thing about that is the only they have a select number from the DECA sessions. I wish it was the complete DECA sessions. So maybe if they remix this or whatever, it'd be nice to have everything together. I think they did, what was it, 15 songs at the DECA sessions. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just uh, what are your memories, if you have any, of this when it came out? Because for me, like I said, it was a very special time. The Beatles, for me, the best band of all time, and always will be. So that's it. Uh, I would love your thoughts on uh, if you are about my age or so, and you remember when these all came out. I know for me it was a very exciting time, just kind of like it is now with the uh, Red and Blue albums being remixed and released again. So. Bye.